today. So for our next session, please welcome Timur Solodovnikov, who's going to be talking about the use of Cilium CNI in ClickHouse Cloud. So let's give Timur a big round of applause. Thank you for joining this session. Um, before talking about Cilium and uh, networking, uh, I want to share some interesting facts um, about our journey. Uh, it took only six months uh, between hiring the first engineer to data plane team and opening our cloud for private preview. And so it was really important to find right technology for each piece of our stack. And after running Cilium in uh, more than a year in our cloud, I can tell you that Cilium is a great choice for our platform. About me, um, my name is Timur Sladovnikov. I'm a site reliability engineer. I work in infrastructure team. I joined to ClickHouse in uh, June 2022, right after opening it for private preview. Um, our team is involved in the multiple projects, projects related to infrastructure improvement and management. Um, for those who don't know what is ClickHouse, ClickHouse is open source, uh, column oriented distributed uh, database. Uh, it was open sourced in uh, 2016 under Apache 2 license, and since then it gained um, the huge popularities. Um, a lot of companies, they use it for uh, analyzing uh, the big data. Uh, that's what uh, ClickHouse actually was built to analyze the huge amounts of data uh, back in uh, 2009. So use cases, uh, usually people use it for like, analytics, dashboardings, um, ad hoc queries um, for near real time analytics. Yeah, that's what is this. And we are building cloud on top of ClickHouse. I, I wanna show a quick, um, not demo, but uh, user experience. In our cloud, you can create ClickHouse instance in like seconds. Um, we currently uh, support uh, AWS and GCP. In AWS, we support eight regions. In GCP, we support three regions. Um, you just need to pick right region and set some settings. For example, we support auto-scaling. Um, you can define minimum and maximum limits for an instance, and instance will be scaled up and down based on your workload. Also, we support sky scaling. Um, which means that if you don't have any activity on your instance, uh, instance will be paused and you will not be paying for your compute resources. Um, you can connect to ClickHouse Cloud using standard tools such as uh, ClickHouse CLI. Also, we um, uh, draw a lot of uh, drivers, uh, connectors. Uh, um, most of the programming, pro programming languages, they have connectors to ClickHouse. And also we have um, ClickHouse SQL UI. Um, it's uh, the UI that's part of ClickHouse Cloud where you can um, build queries, visualizations, and also actually our uh, SQL UI can build queries for you using generative AI. Okay, uh, about our stack. Uh, currently, uh, we, are, we, we, we have cloud deployed in AWS and GCP. Next year, we will open it for Azure. Uh, we use managed Kubernetes services. Um, we use Terraform for infrastructure as a code. Uh, our compute and storage are separated. For in AWS, we use S3 for storing data in ClickHouse. In GCP, we use uh, Google Cloud Storage. Also, we use uh, Istio for data ingress. Um, Istio is a single point of entry to our cloud. And also, we use uh, Argo CD for managing our um, Kubernetes manifests. Uh, during initial design, uh, we, we had some network uh, requirements for our networking stack. One of the, the most important requirements was the performance. Uh, ClickHouse is a blazing fast database. It can easily utilize network bandwidth on compute resource, on compute instance, excuse me. Um, yeah, and it, we, it's, it was really important that network CNI shouldn't be bottleneck for database. Also, these um, networking stack should be easy to debug. Our company is relatively young and uh, we don't have network engineers. We have mostly software developers and SREs. Um, and also, um, really important requirement re is network isolation. We um, host like multiple instances and it's really important to 
have isolation on networking layer as well. So, and we had multiple options. We reviewed them. For example, multiple AWS accounts or VPCs or subnets or multiple Kubernetes clusters. But those options are not really uh, 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 good for us because it, it would add a lot of uh, maintenance burden and uh, it, it's just hard to manage. And we decided to start with uh, just a single Kubernetes cluster with multiple namespaces and network isolation on using network policies. And actually, initially, we started with Calico. Um, yeah, worked for us. Uh, but later, we switched to Cilium because Cilium just uh, had better performance comparing to Calico. One of the reasons is the eBPF. And also, Cilium, uh, an another uh, advantage, advantage of Cilium is uh, network policies, Cilium network policies. Um, yeah, to be fair, uh, later Calico also added eBPF support, but we still decided to go with Cilium. Um, what is ClickHouse instance? Um, we run our compute in Kubernetes. Um, Cilium, uh, ClickHouse instance is a set of pods that deploy it in a single namespace. We have our uh, operator that creates all Kubernetes items, such as ClickHouse server pod, keeper pod, Keeper is our implementation of Zookeeper. Um, um, also, our management layer, it creates an IAM role and attaches it to ClickHouse pod. Uh, this role has read-write access to S3 bucket. So, and also, operator creates uh, network policies. Um, I skipped a lot of um, information here, uh, but I just want to share, highlight some uh, items. Um, in general, we allow access uh, between pods within the namespace. Also, we allow inbound connections from certain pods, for example, for monitoring, and also from Istio for ingress. And also, we allow outbound connection, connections from the namespace. Uh, why we need it? Because our customers, they can ingest data from internet. It could be, for example, click out, uh, sorry, Kafka cluster that deployed in internet, and customers would connect to this Kafka and load data uh, to ClickHouse server. But we want to make sure that we uh, block uh, certain connections. For example, we block access to ciders that we use in our uh, VPC, and also we block access to AWS metadata service. So using Cilium network policies, we achieve network isolation on using network policies. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about inbound connection handling and how it works in uh, our cloud. Um, as I said before, we use Istio for ingress. And as you can see on this schema, uh, actually we run Istio in dedicated Kubernetes cluster. One of the reasons why we decided to deploy Istio separately is to protect uh, Istio pods from potential uh, bugs or if, for example, customers, uh, for, if they escape the pod, they wouldn't get access to Istio pods and certificates and secrets. and um, we, um, how it works, uh, when customer establishes connection, uh, con um, the, it lands to Istio pods, and using SNI headers, Istio forwards a connection to proper database backend. Everything works fine. And you might be interested how it works, because uh, the, with network policies, we should, have, we should allow access from Istio pods to uh, database server, and Really easy, we use uh, Istio labels to uh, allow inbound connections. And everything is OK, right? But in general, it will not work. But thanks to Cilium Cluster Mesh, we um, use Cluster Mesh between proxy cluster and data plane cluster where we deploy database pods. And it allows us to create network policies in a way like uh, as Istio pods would be deployed in the same cluster. So it's really a uh, really cool feature for us. There are other features that we do not use. For example, pod IP routing, we do not use that because we uh, install seal and we uh, using ENI mode. It means that our pods, they receive IP address from AWS uh, VPC. So all routing and forwarding is done by AWS, not by seal. Um, OK. Uh, how we install Cilium? We use Helm for installation. 
Um, first thing, we uh, delete standard network daemon sets that created by AWS, and um, we create certificate for establishing trust between uh, proxy cluster and data plane cluster. Um, certificate is managed by Cert Manager tool. Um, next step, we install Cilium on data plane cluster, and as part of this installation, we expose Cilium, Cilium uh, cluster mesh API server through internal load balancer. And also we set cluster name, name and ID. And this should be unique within the cluster mesh. As a next step, we uh, install Cilium on proxy cluster. Uh, proxy cluster is the pl cluster where we uh, run our Istio pods. Uh, we also expose cluster mesh API server through internal load balancer. We set uh, name and ID. And also we create external Kubernetes service and we point this service to internal load balancer that was created on the previous step. So proxy cluster can connect to cluster mesh API server through uh, these servers. And as a last step, we create external name service and in data plane cluster and point it to internal load balancer in, in proxy cluster. And we add uh, configuration, uh, cluster mesh uh, configuration as part of this step. So uh, that's it. Uh, unfortunately, as you can see, uh, there are circular dependencies and it's, uh, that's why we, we use it, we, we do this installation manually because uh, there are load balancers created in, uh, in data plane and in, pro in proxy cluster and it's hard to create automation for that. Uh, it is possible to set up cluster mesh uh, using a Cilium CLI, but we prefer just use uh, Helm. Okay. Um, unfortunately, uh, we we use Cilium network policies in AWS, and unfortunately, we cannot use it in network uh, in GCP. One of the reasons uh, because we uh, use managed Cilium <coughs> managed Cilium in GCP, and um, in, when you use manage Cilium in GCP, you cannot create Cilium network policies. So we have to create standard network policies. Um, there are some limitations that really do not affect us. Um, for example, in with Cilium, you can create uh, cluster-wide network policies that will be ap applied to the cluster. When, but uh, when you create um, standard network policies, it's a uh, scope to namespace. So um, also, with Cilium, you, Cilium network policies, they support L7 protocols such as DNS, um, Kafka, and HTTP. Um, in standard network policies, you can create, you can use only L3 and 4, and also um, you can use uh, pod labels. In Cilium network policies, you can uh, target services, um, but in uh, network policies, you can't. But as a workaround, you can use pods, uh, pod labels that uh, attached to service selector. So also not a big deal for us. And also Cilium provides such thing like uh, entities. Entities is, uh, as I understand, predefined set of IP addresses that can be used in network policies. For example, you can target Cube API server or um, internet or host. There are multiple. I didn't put all of them here. Uh, where in standard network policies, you can use uh, CIDR notation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, uh, as I said before, it was really important to uh, have tools that will allow us to debug network layer. And um, Cilium provides really nice uh, feature as Hubble, Hubble UI. Uh, in Hubble, you can uh, debug and see traffic in real time and see drops or uh, what traffic is forwarded. So a really nice tool. Um, I'm going to talk about problems we had in our cloud. Uh, one of the problems is ENI limits. Uh, because we run Cilium in ENI mode, um, some of the uh, Cilium doesn't have knowledge about some AWS instances. Uh, as you know, um, uh, EC2 instances, each instance type has own limits and, uh, for example, how many network interfaces it has, uh, how much IP addresses you can attach to it. So um, our version didn't have uh, information about uh, certain instance types and uh, really easy to fix. 
In our case, just uh, run those, this command, uh, found it in Istio source code, and uh, passed this information through Helm variables. Um, uh, another interesting problem we had uh, after optimizing our compute resources, our cluster autoscaler started uh, expand and shrink our cluster more aggressively. And um, so what happened? In the namespace, in a ClickHouse namespace, one of the pod had problems with connecting to other pods. And it was really hard to figure out initially what is going on actually because uh, what we did uh, to fix this problem, we drained the node where this uh, pod was deployed and it helped. Um, but of course, it's not a solution, not a long-term solution. And uh, after debugging, we found that, um, as you can see here, we uh, this is the IP address of the pod and we got information from IP cache and you can see that this IP address had identity four. We also got um, information about this uh, endpoint uh, using this command. And as you can see, we had uh, correct labels here. And when we checked what is identity four, we found that it actually had label reserved health. And uh, that was the clue for us because usually this label attached to a Kubernetes node, not to the pod. And that's why uh, we, we figured out that something is wrong with uh, identity or uh, mapping. And we found bug. Uh, luckily, uh, uh, fortunately, it was already closed. Uh, this bug related to incorrect node deletion. Uh, in our case, we just updated Cilium. And yeah, that's, that's what is for us. Um, also, uh, Unfortunately, cluster mesh is not available in GCP in Azure if you use managed Cilium. Don't know why. Uh, maybe someday it will be implemented. Um, yeah. Overall, Cilium is a great choice for our platform. It helps to forward a huge amount of data in our cloud, and we are growing, and so, so far we are happy with Cilium. Um, if you want to try ClickHouse or know Click, uh, about ClickHouse, please uh, check our booth, uh, M14. Uh, you can install ClickHouse uh, using this command uh, and run it locally and try it. Or you can sign up to ClickHouse Cloud and get $300 credits. So check it out. ClickHouse is really fast database for analytical workloads. Um, also, we are hiring. Um, Please check out our website. Uh, we need talented engineers. So we are looking for SREs, uh, software developers, and yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Timo. If you have questions, we have the mic in the middle of the room there. So please just go up, form an orderly queue, and ask your questions. Thank you. Hi, I have to ask, uh, sounds like there are some downsides uh, when you're selecting a vendor provided a managed Cilium solution and no guarantees certainly of uh, interoperability, uh, I guess, uh, at any point in the future. Um, just curious, what drove your organization's decision uh, toward the managed service and instead of being able to, I guess, uh, carve your own destiny. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, we wanted to um, op just optimize our operation and uh, to like move this burden of upgrades and patching to cloud provider. That was the driving driving factor for us. So, uh, is that a comment about the administrative burden for the AWS uh, deployments that you have? Um, yeah, kind of, yeah. It's, it's not really um, painful to upgrade uh, Cilium within the version, within the release um, so far. Um, but yeah, we, we wanted to just try another way. And maybe we will change this in the future. Maybe we will migrate to <laughs> uh, uh, bring your uh, CNI. Uh, and if I can 
to ask one more. Uh, sure. If, so if there were no future of managed services uh, being interoperable across clouds, uh, what would you do right now if you knew that? Um, could you please uh, rephrase the question? So if, if you were told today you will never have a Cilium the ability to uh, use what, what you might call vanilla Cilium uh, across multi-cloud with managed Cilium services, what would you, what decisions would you make now based on that information? Of course, uh, of course we will, we will install our version of Cilium manually and uh, use, uh, we wouldn't use uh, managed Cilium in that way. Okay, thanks very much. Hi, thanks for your presentation. Could I please take you back, take us back to the page with the IP address, please? Back, back. Yes, this, uh, this bit, yes. So, could you explain how you fix this problem again, please? You ran that AWS describes command and then... Yeah, um, so we faced this problem when we uh, tried to deploy, tried to uh, use our cloud with different instance types. And basically, we start, started uh, the new types. We created new node group in Kubernetes. And uh, pods couldn't start on this node group. And that's the error we had. And um, so we just found that actually Cilium didn't have information about in a limits for those instance types. And I found this command in Cilium source code. I run this, and this command generated this configuration. So, and I just used this, passed this configuration through Helm variables. That's it. So, essentially, what we do here is, uh, means that this R6 ID, 12x large, has eight interfaces, I think, and you can attach up to 30 IP addresses. So, it's just, uh, information for Cilium. That's how you can operate with those instances. Thank you. I asked that question because we are running into an, a cluster of run out of IP addresses. Cilium tells you, I don't have enough IP addresses to spin up a new pod. Mm. So it's something we've been dealing with for the past few days, and I'll see if this is going to help us. Thank you.